Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at the ROG Strix B450F Gaming Mark II and work out why it's number one on Amazon. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're taking a look at the new ASUS ROG Strix B450F Dash Gaming Mark II. Now this is an upgraded version of, uh, yeah, you pretty much guessed it, the B450F Gaming, which in itself was the numero uno on Amazon.co.uk in terms of motherboard sales. So what has the version 2 got up its sleeves? Is it worth upgrading? And uh, is it worth buying a B450 now in 2021 regardless? So we'll go through, unbox it, take a look at the features, uh, have a discussion on it, and then see if it's actually the board for you. Okay, so let's talk about some of the upgrades that this particular board has over its predecessor. So first of all, one of the outstanding features is the new upgraded VRM setup. So now we've got a 12-phase setup, so that's split into 8 for the V-Core and 4 for the SoC. This kind of works in a slightly odd way in a parallel design, so essentially it is a 4 plus 2 design, but it is kind of virtualized into a 12-phase. I'll put some more information about that in the video description below. So if you want to find out the nitty gritty of the VRM, then there will be links to that and it will go into it in great depth. Next up, one of the uh, nice additions, which I personally appreciate, is the fact that now this is a B450 board which actually supports addressable RGB straight out of the box. It also supports the previous version, 12 volt RGB, but certainly is a nice inclusion. The actual heatsink design for the VRM and also the VRM at the rear has been upgraded and greatly increased. The actual physical weight of this board is pretty hefty. It is a very heavy board. And also some other things which may be slightly more important than colorful lights is the memory capacity. So now they doubled the memory capacity. The previous model had a top spec of 64 gigabytes, whereas this now will take up to 128 gigabytes over four sticks of 32 gigs. So that's quite an improvement. And also taking that into account, they've also upgraded the specification of the memory in megahertz. So now this tops out at around about 4,400 megahertz which for a B450 board is pretty awesome. Another very key feature for some of you out there is the ability to use the BIOS flashback button. So this has now got BIOS flashback on there, which kind of I don't understand fully. Now I understand what it's used for, obviously we've done videos on it previously, which you can check out many of the links up here, but for a board which actually comes straight out of the gate with Ryzen 5000 series ready, why would you really need a BIOS flashback button? I get, yes, there probably will be some 4,000, 5,000, or maybe even 6,000 processors which steadily come out of the gate from AMD, but as far as it's concerned, realistically, this board pretty much supports every single processor on the market from AMD, essentially straight out of the box. That is the beauty of the B450 chipset. A lot of you out there are probably going, well, it's not a B550 or it's not an X570, and yeah, you're right, it does let some of the features from that particular chipset, such as PCI Express Gen 4 as being one of them. But this board is compatible as heck. You can basically use a first, second, or third generation processor out of the box and not have any issues. Well, at least in theory. But if you do get any issues with your upgrade or your build, don't worry, because this board now has an integrated DLED controller, so you can actually see what the problem is. So there's four LEDs on there which will light up, very similar to some of the X570 boards, such as the Tough Gaming, which actually was very beneficial because of memory issues on that board. So before we do actually get into the unboxing process, let's talk about money. Now, currently at the moment, this is a new board on the shelves, pretty much, it's been out a couple of months, but is retailing for around about £104, which actually isn't that bad, being as the previous version, the standard gaming version, is about eight to £10 cheaper. So certainly, if you are considering this board in its previous variation, the extra money spent, I think, personally, is well worth it. Whether or not it's worth it against other B450 boards, such as, obviously, the Tomahawk, Tomahawk Max, Tomahawk Max version 2, um, that is down for you guys to decide, but certainly we'll go through the features and then you can make up your own minds. So let's start off with the uh, product tour of the box. So as you can see, obviously, Republic of Gamers, ROG Strix B450 F Gaming version 2. Uh, nice picture of the motherboard there. Again, nice thing that we see straight away is a little sticker on here saying Ryzen 5000 series ready. So this board is ready straight out of the gate for 5000 series processors, which is absolutely awesome. No need for BIOS updates, literally get your processor. In fact, get any processor, 5000 series, 3000 series, 2000 series, or even an older 1000 series if you're planning on a potential upgrade and doing like a stepping stone effect. So you've got an old processor already, your motherboard's died a death, put this in, use your old chip, and then when you can actually buy a 5000 series, you're pretty much ready to go. As we said, it's based on the B450 chipset. We've probably said that enough times by now, and obviously it supports Aura Sync and all that kind of stuff. 
Looking at the back of the box, it goes into some more depth about the features. So you've got a integrated back panel with IO ports. You also got some extra features such as the uh, VRM 8 plus 4 stages. You've also got BIOS flashback button as we mentioned. M.2 heat sinks are now included and obviously Aurora sync. Taking a look inside the box, and we're greeted first of all by the motherboard itself. There is a package here which comes with four, yeah, four SATA cables, which is slightly unusual. I think actually this is the first board I've seen in a long, long time that actually supplied four SATA cables straight out of the box. Next up, we've got the motherboard, but we'll put that to one side for now. Going into the inner carton, there's a whole selection of stuff in here. So first of all, we have got a RGB cable extension. So if you're putting an RGB strip in here and it's not close to the RGB headers on the board, you can use that to extend the length of the strip. Also, there is another connection for your IQ type connection with Corsair RGB connection. There is a little spacer pad for M.2 drives. There's a bunch of cable ties. There's some M.2 mounting pillars and screws. A welcome to Republica Gamer certificate. A user manual. A quick start guide. Safety information. One of these round things. And best of all, we get a sheet of stickers. Very important. Now these are actually uh, quite useful. If you don't like the shiny look of your BIOS battery in your motherboard, then you can stick on one of these ROG logos. Also as well, convenience of these at the bottom are designed for putting around your SATA cable so you can easily identify drives. And there's some other stickers you can stick on your PC, etc, etc. So yeah, pretty good. So let's take a look at the actual board itself. And as you can see, it is a very pretty board, and that is obviously going to be the case. It is an ROG Strix, and you are paying a little bit of uh, ASUS tax for that particular privilege. I think actually the board looks really nice. There's no really garish looks to it. There's no odd colours. It's essentially all black, grey, silver, all those kind of tones. So yeah, will fit into pretty much most builds. The only thing which is slightly a uh, little bit colourful is going to be the Strix logo on there, which has got a kind of a... Uh, sort of pearlescent effect, so a little bit of a rainbow effect when you move it around on different lights, but that should tie in quite nicely with your RGB lighting. So starting from the top corner, so in the top corner we've got this uh, big plastic shield. This part is actually plastic, but the VRM underneath it is solid metal. Also as well, there is a connection cable which runs up to the top here, so the ROG logo can be illuminated and obviously can be controlled in the Aurora Sync software. Certainly if you want to, you can turn it all off in the BIOS, entirely up to you. In the very top corner of the board, we've got our 8-pin supplementary power connector for your CPUs. Uh, a little bit tight in there because of the way the VRM is actually stacked in there, but certainly I'd rather have a little bit of difficulty getting the power cable in than I would not having a VRM cooler, so yeah, that works out really well. Again, this is a kind of virtual 12-phase VRM, so you've got 8 phases for the V-Core and 4 phases for the SOC. The actual chips used and conductors etc i'll put in the video description so you can check those out but essentially they're all pretty high quality components and most of the uh, chokes etc all metal all solid and generally from what i've seen from other reviews of this board already they do work particularly well and obviously you do have to bear in mind this is a b450 board the power requirements back then weren't quite as dramatic as they are now for some of the newer chips so i think they've actually done a fantastic job of bringing a slightly older board and dragging it slap bang into 2021. So moving on slightly more, we've got obviously the AM4 socket, which supports pretty much uh, everything, so shouldn't have any issues there. You've obviously got the plastic retention clips for CPU coolers, that kind of stuff. Moving up into the top, we've got the first of our fan connections. So you've got two there. You've got the normal CPU fan connector and also a additional CPU fan connector. So if you're using something like the Arctic Freezer 34 with the dual fan setup, you can, if you want to, use individual headers for that. Or alternately, you can actually use those for other fans, etc. All of that is programmable and configurable in the BIOS and also in Fan Expert 4. Next to that, we've got a 4 pin 12 volt RGB connection. Not addressable, sadly, but uh, certainly it is an option for RGB. And then moving across, we've got our four RAM slots. Now, again, this will support up to 128 gigabytes of RAM at up to DDR4 4400 speeds. Obviously, that is going to be dependent mostly on what processor you're using and obviously the quality of RAM, etc, etc, but certainly there is an option to do that, and I would imagine they're probably going to increase those speeds as time goes on. Next up, we've got our 24-pin power connector for the main power for the board, and next up, we've got our USB 3 front panel header connector. Moving slightly down, we've got six SATA connectors. Now, because of the way the B450 chipset works, a lot of the stuff on this board is shared in various ways with PCI Express lanes and also being highly dependent on what processor you're using. 
So if you're using certain combinations, then you may find that slots five and six for your SATA drives will not be used. That is if you're using the primary NVMe slot for either NVMe or SATA M.2 drives. So there are those things to take into consideration. Again, I will put a link directly to this motherboard's website so you can check out the uh, specs individually for your particular processor so you can work out if it's gonna be right for you or not. I would go through the individual specs, but there are so many options. Again, this is B450. There's an absolute ton of processors which this supports, so it would take an extremely long time for me to go through each individual one. But if you've got any specific questions that aren't answered on the ASUS website, then definitely uh, drop me an email or a comment below, and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. So moving down, or across rather, from there, so you've got your heat sink there for the chipset itself, so that is all hidden underneath there. Again, this is all metal rather than being plastic, which is good to see. And underneath that, we've got one of the M.2 slots. So there are actually two M.2 slots here. The top one is connected directly to the CPU itself, and the bottom one runs directly from the chipset. The eagle eyed amongst you will have also noted there is another M.2 slot there. Now that M.2 slot there is actually the E-type key. So for those of you that want to add Wi-Fi to this board, and yeah, even though it's quite an expensive B450, there isn't any integrated Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for that matter. So if you do want to add that, they have given you the ability to do that using the M.2 key there. You can pick those up relatively inexpensively. Although sadly, there isn't actually any way of connecting the wires that would come from that drive to any external antenna. So there's nothing on the back plate, uh, no other options. So you'd have to use some sort of riser card, in which case, to be honest with you, you're probably better off just buying a PCI Express adapter card for the simplicity, or perhaps obviously a USB dongle. So we'll move across slightly now. So over on this side, we've got two fan headers, although technically one of them isn't really a fan header. It's an AIO pump header, which runs it 100% all the time. But the one beneath it is like a chassis fan header, which works in PWM or DC mode, as do all of the other fan connectors. So we've got a PCI Express times one slot there. So that can be useful if you're using maybe some sort of PCI Express capture card. Then we've got our PCI Express times 16 slot. So that is PCI Express generation three times 16 slot. And then underneath that, we've got another PCI Express Gen 2 times one slot. Further down, we've got our BIOS battery, slap bang in the middle there. And then we've also got another times 16 size slot, which will run obviously considerably slower depending on what processor you're using and all that kind of stuff. Again, due to the shared bandwidth, realistically, if you put a graphics card in there, it's likely to be either times four or times eight capacity. Although realistically these days, SLI and Crossfire is pretty much dead in the water. So I don't really see many people using that particular slot. Underneath that, we've got another PCI Express Gen 2 times one slot. So again, if you want to use capture cards, PCI Express, Wi-Fi cards, that sort of stuff, you can use those for those nice and easily. Underneath that, yet another PCI Express times 16 size slot. Again, this is gonna be Gen 2 and is gonna be, yeah, based on whatever processor you've got on there, is gonna share bandwidth and properties with the rest of the system. It really is quite a confusing mess to be completely honest with you, but certainly most people I think are probably gonna go with maybe something like a Ryzen 5 3600 or maybe a 2700X, put in a times 16 slot graphics card, probably Gen 3 or Gen 4, it will work fine. They are backwards compatible. And it's gonna be the basically a really good foundation for a gaming system. So moving down further to the board again, we've got another M.2 slot here. That is connected to the chipset, as we said. So again, all the previous applies as terms of speed, etc. They are gonna be limited. Then none of them are PCI Express Gen 4, so obviously do take that into consideration. You can buy a PCI Express Gen 4 drive and put it in, but you just won't get those speeds that you'd expect from the drive. So let's go down through the, uh, the nitty gritty of the front IO and all the expandability at the bottom. So first of all, in this bottom section, you've got your front panel IO, which is pretty much where you'd expect it to be. Next up, there's another two fan headers, again, PWM or DC control. I really do like the fan header layout on this particular board. It's been done extremely well balanced. So you've got two at the top, two in the middle, two at the bottom, which I think is absolutely perfect. Again, in this rear section, you're most likely to have a single chassis fan, which will connect up there quite happily. And possibly if you're using a water cooler, plug in your AIO pump there. Yeah, absolutely fine. It's a really, really good combination in my opinion. Also in this area, there is also a thermal probe sensor. So if you want to, you can attach a thermal probe, which you can then monitor in the BIOS and also through software to dedicate speeds of fans, etc. use all that kind of stuff. Next up, there is another RGB 12 volt connector. And next to that is my favorite, the five volt three pin version. So yeah, you can use addressable RGB on B450. 
There's not actually many boards in the B450 range that do support addressable RGB. There's some notable exceptions like the ASRock B450 Pro 4, that kind of thing, and obviously Steel Legend. But as far as ASUS, MSI, and some of the others go, it's pretty much this and the MSI AC Carbon, that kind of stuff. Those are the real ones that have it. This for me has always been one of those things which has annoyed me. Having addressable RGB to a lot of people means absolutely nothing and they couldn't care less. But we do get a lot of people on the Discord and also in the comment section for various boards. How do I connect up my RGB to my motherboard? It's only got a 4-pin. And essentially the answer is generally you can. So actually having the option of having it there, which doesn't really add a great deal of cost, I think is a really good inclusion. So moving on next to that, we've got our clear CMOS switch. So if you want to, you can uh, just short out with a screwdriver, or if you want to, you can maybe connect up your reset button to that if you want to uh, play in the BIOS settings, you want a quick and easy way of resetting your BIOS. Next to that, there is only a single USB 2.0 header. So one of the things that has actually kind of gone from the previous version, the previous version did have two of those. So if you are planning on using this with certain setups, maybe you've got IQ, and you want to connect up that and also maybe some other USB 2 front panel connections, then that is going to be something you are going to get stuck on, unfortunately. Obviously, you can plug in those extensions, which will then divide that up into more ports, but that is something which I think may catch out some people. Moving along, we've got our TPM, or Trusted Platform Module connection at the bottom there, and next to that, you've got the COM port, which uh, yeah, still being included even in 2021. Next to that, we've got the audio front panel connector for HD audio, and the audio on this is the Supreme FX, so it's based around a custom version of the S1220 chipset from Realtek, so this does support 7.1 audio straight away, and also features some new increased features such as noise cancelling AI for the microphone, no matter where it's plugged in, so if it's plugged into there, into the mic jacks, absolutely fine if you plug in the USB mic, the sound profile will actually carry through and still do the automatic AI for noise cancelling on your microphone. That is a really clever inclusion. Before we go on to the rear I.O., let's uh, flip the board over and take a quick look on the back. So on the back, you can see it's pretty much the usual deal. We've got a little bit of a ROG bling on there, and also you've got your standard AM4 backplate. Another inclusion, which is uh, something you don't often see, especially on sort of more tier 3, tier 2 boards, is another heatsink on the back here. So this is on the rear of the VRM section. Uh, designed obviously to wick some of the heat away from that VRM solution. This is something we're seeing more and more on B550 and X570 boards, so yeah, nice inclusion, and anything which can reduce the VRM temperatures and increase longevity of the board, in my opinion, is a welcome addition. So let's take a look at the rear I.O. So it's actually a, a pretty decent setup, in my opinion. So we've got the legacy options, so if you want to use an old-fashioned keyboard and mouse in that port, there is a combo port for that, which is absolutely fine. Next to that, we've also got two USB ports, and also there is the BIOS flashback button. There is also a very, very small LED in there. So if you are doing the BIOS flash, you can get notifications of what's actually happening, whether it's stored, whether it's working, whether it's completed, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, as per usual, we will do a full BIOS uh, run through of this board and also a BIOS flash for those of you that are interested. Next to that, we've got a USB 3 port and also a USB type C port, which is always really nice to see on a slightly older chipset. Then we've got our display port and HDMI port, so these will only work if you're using this in combination with an APU. Quite often we get people that are trying to flash their board or see if a board actually works, and they're plugging in connections there with maybe a processor that doesn't support it. So these ports, I can't stress enough, will only ever work if there is a APU installed in the actual board itself. So when I say APU, I mean something like the 2200G, 3200G, those kinds of processors. Moving along, so we've got a pair of red super speed USB connections, so that's 10 gigabit per second. And then next to that, there's also some of the older Type A 3.2 connectors. One of those you can see has got a BIOS sign on it, so when you are doing your BIOS flashback, usually, normally on these sorts of boards, the BIOS would be inserted into one of these ports closest to the actual switch itself. But for some reason, they've rooted it into this particular port, so if you are doing a BIOS flashback, just make sure you're using that port there. Above that, we've got our Intel Gigabit LAN, so that supports 10100 and Gigabit, and that's using the i211T chipset. Uh, absolutely fine, and obviously always good to see an Intel chipset on any board. Moving down slightly, we've got our audio connectors, which I personally love to see this with the, uh, the proper old-fashioned color connections on there, so you know which one is which. So you've got option for rear, center and sub-speaker, microphone in, line out, and also line in. And for those of you that want to use this in a media center or with a shrine system, there's also a speed effect also. 
So overall, uh, a pretty decent feature set considering it is a B450 chipset. Obviously there are limitations in regard to the uh, lane sharing for PCI Express on this board. And um, obviously the big kind of elephant in the room is why would you buy B450 at this time? And I gotta be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. That is the God's honest truth. I really don't know why people are buying this, but it is number one on Amazon and it has been for a very long time between this board the previous generation of it, the previous gaming version, and also things like the Tomahawk Max, Tomahawk Max 2, and also the original Tomahawk. Between them, they've all been jostling around for position. Now, recently, the Tomahawk Max has basically almost fallen off the chart, so it does seem that the days are numbered for that particular board. And with this being a very similar price to the Tomahawk Max, I can see why it does add a lot more value proposition. Obviously, it's an ASUS board, so it's a slightly more premium product, some would argue. Also, you've got the integration of a little bit of RGB on the board itself. You've got a much better VRM solution. RAM-wise, again, 128 gigs possible from the 64 on the Tomahawk and obviously the previous version of this. More fan headers, more bling, basically more potential. I actually really do like this board. It's a shame that it isn't two years ago. This board, I think, would have been an absolute killer at that price and with this feature set that it currently has now. With it now being 2021, and obviously maybe even 2022, depending on when you're watching this, it does make this board very difficult to recommend wholeheartedly. Now there are other options. Uh, recently I've bought a B550 Unify for £120 on the used market. So when you take that into consideration, that's £15 more than this board. Yes, this is a new board, that's a used board. But the feature set comparison is completely, completely overshadowed by that board. So I guess it's going to come down to what you need and what you've got and how much you've got. If you've got a slightly older processor from first, second or third generation and you want a new board which has got a lot of features but maybe isn't cutting edge technology, then I think this works out very, very well. And to be honest with you, I'd be really interested to see what you think. This, at the moment, like I said, is number one on Amazon and there must be a reason for it. So let me know in the comments what you think of it. I'm genuinely interested to know. So anyway, I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. This has been the ASUS ROG Strix B450F Gaming version 2. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you for version 3. Thanks for watching.